Okay, next we have the science <coughs> participant, uh, Mr. Francisco Nunez, who will be presenting on the computational seismology through the eyes of parallel computing. Find out how the clicker worked. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Francisco Nunez. I am a junior computer science and engineering major with a math minor from Morehouse College. Uh, and the research I conducted before I began is from Stanford University uh, in the Department of Geoscience. Okay, so earthquakes of this magnitude, um, can you guys hear me okay like this? Yes. Okay, earthquakes of this magnitude are a rarity, yet they pose significant societal hazards to our society. As a result, this forces scientists to resort to scientific modeling in order to better assess how events such as these affect our environment. Computers are one such way of creating these models. Mathematical functions derived from theory, field work, as well as experimentation provide a way for scientists to assess events that have already occurred, as well as events that may occur in the future. Unfortunately, mathematical data sets that you can use can be very computationally taxing. This is where my research comes in. The title of my project is Computational Psychology Through the Eyes of Parallel Computing. The, with the higher occurrence of earthquakes, especially in areas like California, more data is produced. As a result, more data has to be analyzed. And as a result of that extensive analysis, more computational technologies required to perform the data analysis that is needed. Now, you may ask, why is this relevant? Well, as I said before, scientific models are <coughs> great computational attacks. Luckily, the advent and integration of CPUs and GPUs promises to be a possibly effective solution to this dilemma. Now, before I proceed, I'm going to say that uh, the CPU uh, stands for Central Processing Unit, and the GPU is the Graphical Processing Unit. And as you can see by the illustration, there are more or less different types of brains for the computers. Now, let's define a couple of terms. To begin with, uh, parallel computing is basically performing many compilations simultaneously, and it works off of the basic principle that larger problems are subdivided into smaller ones. Now, in order to better understand this concept, let's do an illustration. So you have this construction worker working on this big block. He's a pretty diligent worker, but that's a pretty big block. So he's working on this block, and it's, it's, pretty, it's, pretty, it's a pretty tedious task, and this represents the work done by a CPU. Now, what parallel computing says is instead of having this one builder working on this one big block, why don't you subdivide the blocks into multiple blocks so that the builder, multiple builders can work on this block simultaneously in smaller pieces. Now, though the workers may not be individually as good as that one worker, collectively doing this task concurrently will yield a better result and a more efficient result. Now, let's do a comparison between the CPU and the GPU. Now, I wanted, I wanted to use an analogy that you guys could relate to and that everybody could relate to, not just the science team. Now the CPU, I like to compare the CPU to a bodybuilder, right? So he's an adult, he has full mental capacity, he's able to uh, do complicated tasks, and he's able to lift the heavy work. Now the GPU, on the other hand, is not a bodybuilder. It's more like a gang of diligent babies. Now these diligent babies don't have as much intellectual aptitude as the bodybuilder, but they have strength in numbers. So that they can do a lot of different things, but they can do only simple tasks, but they can do them concurrently which is represented by a lot of scientific problems. You have a lot of cal calculations being done, but they're done on a large scale, which would be perfectly fit for a group of diligent babies, i.e. the GPU. Now, a problem with the CPU is that it could be very uh, computationally expensive depending on the type of task it's doing. Now, if it's doing a task like doing a lot of different simple calculations at the same time, it will be more expensive, whereas the GPU will be uh, significantly less expensive. Now, this is a demonstration of the power of uh, the GPU and its potential implementation. Now, the following demonstration is a, is a short video of uh, a, a CPU uh, process computer building, uh, uh, designing a picture where, uh, and in comparison to a GPU processor designing a picture. Basically, this is the um, 
this is what this is the CPU right here is a small uh, computerized robot. And what the robot is going to do, as you're, as you're going to see, is uh, the robot is going to draw a picture. It's going to draw a simple picture, a picture of a smiley face. And I'll just let you guys see that. As you can see, the, the computerized uh, CPU robot is uh, is drawing the picture, but it's drawing it pretty slowly. It's drawing it one at a time. You see it drawing dots uh, slowly along along the uh, along the portrait, and, and eventually, what it's going to do is it's going to create a smiley face. This would be better with sound. Now that's that's the CPU. Now you're gonna see what the GPU can do. The GPU is gonna do the same thing with a slightly different photo, and it's gonna do it exponentially faster. Now what the GPU is gonna do, this is one of uh, an example of a GPU processor. What this GPU is gonna do is it's gonna create a picture just like the uh, the, the CPU processor, um, a lot faster, but it's not necessarily gonna create a smiley face. If you believe it, if you believe this, it's gonna paint a picture of the Mona Lisa in a fraction of the time. Uh, software, and this represents how uh, 
how waves propagate through an elastic solid, and then the color represent intensities and velocities. This particular model focuses on velocity. And as you can see, this is basically the activity going on as the wave propagates through the solid. Um, and, and it, it varies in intensity uh, as, as it's on the inside. You see the velocity is a lot more abrupt, and as it's going out, it kind of starts to lessen. So this is an example of what the, the end product was as far as the uh, physical model of what, what different uh, magnitudes of earthquakes look like. Uh, in conclusion, at the end, I was able to successfully uh, implement uh, the GPU uh, and integrate it with the CPU to create a fully functional program. Uh, the only thing I was left to do was to optimize it so it runs faster than the actual CPU program. Like I said before, this integration right now is in its embryonic stages, so it's not a perfect process. And right now, it's still going through the developmental stages. It's kind of like it's kind of like um, a give and take relationship. The, the CPU needs the GPU, and the GPU needs the needs the CPU, but they're not communicating on one port all the time. So what we did is we created uh, time functions uh, to wrap around the program, so we could see how different aspects of the program were run. So for example, the uh, the main function was running at uh, for the GPU at 0.12 uh, milliseconds, whereas the CPU was 0.01 milliseconds. It's significantly faster, but had we continued the project and we would have optimized the process, the GPU would have been uh, significantly uh, faster. So as a result, operation remained to be done. There was less overhead on the CPU as a result because the uh, GPU was integrated. And uh, as, as of now, my project remains unfinished, but this is what's been done. Last but not least, I'll be remiss if I didn't acknowledge the following facilities and, uh, and, and research departments, the John H. Hobbs uh, Scholars Department, the Morehouse College Department of Computer Science, uh, support services at uh, Stanford, uh, as well as the, uh, the following uh, faculty at Stanford as well. Thank you.
uh, uh, informed DPUs uh, for the sake of integrating them with uh, the CD that they already have uh, in, order to, uh, in order to run this software. Now, because of the fact that it's in the beginning stages, is right now it's very computationally expensive. In order to process data, it takes days and days to do it. Uh, because like I said, the integration is just smooth right now. Um, it's kind of like, um, if I, if I want to use a relevant analogy, it's kind of like um, using a comb. A comb is typically used just to comb your hair, you know, but now you're trying to use it to cut your hair, right? So a comb is not meant to do that, right? It, 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 it's capable of doing it, but it's, it's very difficult. So in order, so in order, in order to, uh, in order to uh, reach that integration gap and that disparity and how difficult it is, um, we need to invent newer technology, more seamless technology. Because right now, the GPU can't work by itself. It has to have the aid of the CPU, and it has to borrow from the CPU every time it performs a function. So what type of new technology do you foresee on the horizon to do such a thing? seamlessly uh, uh, bridges the gap between the GPU and the CPU interaction for the sake of science, um, and they need to consolidate that because right now, two different parties are working at the same time. So like I said, I'm working on the CPU, but I'm accessing the GPU remotely because there's only one central GPU that everybody has to use. So when they're, when they're able to integrate those two and put them together and consolidate them into one entity to where it works more seamlessly and it's more convenient, uh, as a result, what will follow is, uh, more computationally efficient uh, uh, scientific uh, com computation programming, et cetera. But from the hardware side, I agree, software can be done, but is there anything from the hardware side to you for that? Uh, making a computer that, I mean, computers already have a CPU and a GPU. I mean, you need the graphical interface card to, to run all of the visuals, right? But you, uh, from the hardware side, basically what you need to do is you need to make a computer that has the CPU and GPU with that. The GPU is capable of performing scientific computations on a more seamless scale. 